Good morning, Word of Life Church and all of our YouTube friends. I trust you've had a good week. I'm excited about today. I kind of want to share on what goes on in your life between when you're born and when you die. I'm trying to do this outside and every time I try and find a quiet moment, something loud goes by. Yesterday we had uh, all of the bikers going by and it was amazing. Uh, however, I definitely couldn't have recorded this. But uh, so here we are Saturday evening trying to find a little quiet moment here. But I want to talk to you about what happens in your life in the dash, in the moment in your life. Because God has called you to actually do something in your life. We're not just supposed to, uh, you know, the Bible says to occupy until he comes. And, you know, I got thinking about that this week. And I said to Sandra, it reminds me of the word occupied. You know, we're so occupied with things like our phones and they're forever calling us, right? You, you know, do is there an email that you need to answer? Is there a, a fresh uh, uh, Facebook post? Is there something that you need to begin to look at? But it got me thinking. And so just a little bit of study. I want to talk about a man. Uh, his name was uh, Dr. John Getty. And he was actually the father of the Presbyterian uh, uh, missions in, uh, in the South Seas. And uh, he lived from 1848 uh, and uh, till 1872. And so for 24 years, he was a missionary uh, on the island of Anatom. And what's interesting about that was on his um, memorial stone, it actually says what he did in his life. And it was real simple. It said when he got there, there was zero Christians. And when he left, there were zero heathens. And so it got me thinking about our lives, that what are we doing with our life? Are we doing something with that dash, that moment that God has given us to do something uh, for him? You know, the Bible says to pray without ceasing, and it makes me think about that um, because, well, the flies are already coming out. Here we are in, in uh, May. Pray without ceasing. And so, you know, realistically, you're not going to do that 24 hours a day. But that attitude of prayer is something that God wants us to live and to do. And so we've talked about that before. But what are we occupying our time with? What are we occupying our thoughts, our heart, and our intent? More importantly, what is God calling us to do? So this man, we you know, think about that. When he went to the island, there were zero Christians. And when he left the island, there were zero heathens. And so that was pretty amazing. Are you actually making an impact in your life? And I think that you are. So don't get discouraged. But as we live for him, and as we follow him, and as we allow him to grow us, so that essentially becomes our prayer without ceasing. You know, we're to walk by faith, not by sight. I think of a, there was a little uh, uh, Sunday school program that had no Sunday school kids. And uh, the pastor was all ready to quit because it just seemed like nothing was going right. Sunday school was non-existent. And his daughter said, Dad, I want to start putting together a little Sunday school program. And so every week she'd prepare something and it felt like every week there was nobody there. And over time, seven people came to the Sunday school and suddenly that young lady had seven students to teach. Later on in life, those seven students became seven Sunday school teachers. So I challenge you that in your life, there is, you know, something that's really urging you. The, the Bible says not only do we walk by faith, but it says those who are gods are led by the Spirit of God. Those who are living for uh, the Lord, we're to be listening. And we're to be listening to see what he wants us to do because he's got a plan, you know. And so the Bible says that he has a plan of a, a future and a hope for us. And we've talked about that before. But it got me thinking that our life really needs to become, uh, uh, you know, a life of influence. That that little dash in your life that at the end we want to hear good, well done, good and faithful servant. But also we want to see this world impacted. And, it, it, you know, just as I was thinking about things, and I think of uh, Moses trying to lead the Israelites. They come out of 400 years of slavery. And even in the middle of all that, there was mountains on one side, and suddenly they had to cross the Red Sea, and Pharaoh was pursuing them. It didn't say it was going to be easy. It didn't say it was going to be uh, anything other than difficult and hard. But when we begin to pursue God, He will lead us, and He will guide us, and He will direct us. But most importantly... He will, you know, the Bible says, uh, you know, give me this mountain. The Bible says that he will lead you and he will lead you across into uh, paths of righteousness and still waters and green pastures. And so when Moses was, you know, he was asked to lead the Israelites out, they had to listen and they had to obey. You know, I imagine when when uh, 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 this uh, this missionary was was heading over there. It was probably not an easy task. I mean, when you get there and they're basically saying, we, we haven't a clue who you are. We've never heard of God. 
We don't know what you're going to talk about. And so that's a, that's a monumental task for his life. There are tasks in your life that maybe feel monumental. But you know, when the Israelites were faced with crossing the Red Sea, they were given special instructions. And even though they were being pursued, they were given special instructions. You know, the part of being a Christian that we don't like is the fact that we don't like to be pursued. We don't like hard things. We don't like things that are tough. And so when it, you know, kind of use those opportunities to push you into prayer. Use those opportunities to say, God, what have you got for my life? What direction do you have for me? But like that Sunday school teacher, don't give up. Think about those times when, when that, that pastor or that little girl, that the teenage girl, sorry, was, was, was writing out those Sunday school lessons and there was nobody there. She was preparing for a future. God's given you a hope and a future. God's called you to do something. Maybe you're called to change your town. Maybe you're called to change your workplace. Maybe you're called to minister to that friend that needs that, that, that just that, that moment of truth. Maybe you're called to take somebody and just love on them and encourage them and lift them up. And who knows, maybe they're going to be world changers, just like this missionary was. And so, you know, uh, just a, a quick little verse here. Uh, Moses in Exodus 14, uh, verse 13, he said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of your Lord. I want you to think about that. Stand still and see the salvation of your Lord. What does that mean? Well, you know, we think of scriptures that we talk about often. It says, after having done all to stand, you continue to stand. Girded with God's armor. He said to put on the whole armor of God. So in standing, you can be in prayer. In standing, you're not really giving up ground. You're standing firm in what you're doing. You think about the scarecrow. You know, we've we've got... We don't really see too many scarecrows anymore in gardens, but now you hear those those guns that go off and they scare all the birds. But that scarecrow is just standing there, you know? And he just stands there and he doesn't move. Matter of fact, I had a dog one time who used to bark at a scarecrow thinking it was a real person. But just to stand and, and that scarecrow is just propped up in there and it doesn't actually move, but things happen. In your life when it feels like things aren't moving, in your life when it feels like things aren't happening, if God's asked you to be a scarecrow, if God's asked you to stand, having done all to stand, stand therefore. Don't give up. Don't back down. Look at that Sunday school teacher. Seven Sunday school teachers came out of the vision of that one teenage girl that said, I'm going to prepare a lesson. I'm going to do something different. John uh, uh, Getty, Dr. Getty, when he said, I'm going to go into this island and I'm going to preach Jesus. There would have been so many people that said, you can't do it. It's never been done before. You'll probably be lost at sea. It is so easy to get into the negative. Instead, you get into the positive and say, but what did God ask you to do? So when he says pray without ceasing, he's not actually meaning you do nothing. Your life needs to be an attitude of prayer. Thank you for the grace of God. Because you know what? Sometimes our attitude of prayer is no good, right? Somebody cuts you off. Somebody's driving, you know, 48 kilometers an hour. There's all kinds of things and it feels like your Christian walk goes right out the window. But you get right back in the plan of God. Get right back in the purpose of God and say, God, what have you got for me? What are your plans for me? You know what? In your life, you could say, you know what? Maybe your workplace, you could say, zero Christians, right? Zero Christians here, and when you leave, there could be zero non-Christians. And so think about that. Let God use you right where we are, where you are. And then the word also says, don't despise small beginnings, because anything that's worth doing is worth doing right. But it starts out small and it grows. Think of mustard seed faith. It's the smallest of seeds, but it grows, and it grows into an amazing bush, right? So God's called you to do something. God's encouraging you today to move forward. Don't retreat. Don't go back. Stay firm. Get expectant with a vision. You know, just as I'm preaching this, I'm seeing that cow. Where are we here? That cow and that calf. You know, she's nursed. But she's been expectant for nine months. We had three babies born the other day out on the nice green grass. And they get up and get going. And there's a purpose. But that cow was expectant. And so she prepared for months and months and months to have that baby. God is preparing you. God has got a vision for you. We know that he has a plan and a purpose for your life. For I know the thoughts that I have toward you. Jeremiah says that, saith the Lord. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Don't let this old world get you down. Don't let this world make you retreat. Stand and see the salvation of your God. Just like Moses said, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of your God. Remember, 
God says he's the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He's actually the Lord of the harvest. He's the one that's supposed to do it. So when you're witnessing, because sometimes when you preach a little message like this, you can get really caught up in, okay, uh, what do I do? You know, well, you know, the Bible says that God is the Lord of the harvest. Maybe he's called you to plant a seed. Maybe he's called you to water a seed. But in the end, God is the one that brings forth the harvest of life, the God kind of life, the Christian life. And that's the goal here. That's the plan. So if you feel like you're headed toward the, the Red Sea, don't worry. God's going to part a few. You're going to get there. Didn't say it's going to be perfect. Didn't say it's going to be easy. But let's remember, in our life, the dash that you live, what really counts is did we live for Christ. What really counts is did we share the love of Christ. Because love is the only thing that's going to change your situation. And God loves you and he sent his son just for you. And today, if you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, absolutely the most important part of this little sermonette is that you repent and just give your life over to Jesus. Give your life right now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean and make me new. I want to live for you. I want my life to have meaning. I want my life to actually accomplish something for you. And I surrender right now my problems and all of my situation in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you invited Jesus into your heart today, you know the Bible says that you're now a new creation. Old things are passed away. Stop living in the past. Press forward into what God has for you because he will make a way where there seems to be no way. Amen? Bless you. Till next week, we'll maybe do a little antique road show next week, but uh, kind of wanted to get out while the weather is nice, sun shining, and just real pretty out here. So have a wonderful week, and remember, God loves you. Amen. Bye-bye.